Toxic zones are great, but they can be extremely deadly. But like everything else in DayZ, there is a way to survive them and reap the benefits of high tier loot for doing so. Here I'll discuss what you need, where you'll get it and how best to deal with the threat of toxic poisoning so you'll hopefully be exploring these zones with ease. If you liked the video please leave a like and a subscribe, I'm such a small channel and it helps me out so much. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Yay, something else to kill us. There are two types of zones you need to know about, permanent zones and temporary ones. We'll talk about the specifics more later, but basically the permanent ones are always on the map, whereas the temporary zones can become toxic at any moment. You're walking through a city, there's an explosion overhead, and then toxic gas fills the streets. And if you don't have the right gear on you, you're done for. So firstly, what is the right gear? Well, to survive the gas, you're gonna need several pieces of protective clothing. An NBC hood, NBC jacket, NBC gloves, NBC shoes, NBC pants and a gas mask. And each piece of protective clothing needs to be in full working order because if it becomes ruined while you're wearing it, you'll be vulnerable to the gas around you. So be mindful when the zombies attack. And just to note, in addition to these items, you are able to wear other items such as vests, belts or backpacks. However, the gas mask also requires working filters to be of any use. Let's talk about them for a moment because it's important to understand how to use them. A filter is a usable object that runs out over time. You can determine how long it'll last by looking at the little white bar below the filter icon. It should display a percentage. Attaching it to your gas mask will allow you to breathe in the gas. Over time and with use, the filter will slowly start to empty. It takes around eight minutes or so for it to empty from full, but along the way there are signs that indicate how much is left. For example, when there's around 60% of the filter left, your mask will begin to slowly steam up around the bottom as shown here. This will become more visible over time. At 20%, this steaming up will be coupled with heavy breathing. At 10%, your heavy breathing switches to strained breathing, where your character will struggle to take in breath. And then at 5%, you start coughing. Which means you have less than roughly 20 seconds before your filter is completely empty. However, that doesn't mean that your character will cough exactly on the 5% mark. This is just the earliest that that response seems to happen, indicating the filter's depletion is imminent. So anytime you hear a cough, don't assume you have 20 seconds to change it, just change it as soon as possible. Also, you are able to change your filter to a brand new one at any point. So, what is the illness and how do you treat it? Well, luckily there is a way, assuming you don't breathe too much of it in. Firstly, any exposed skin will get cut. This can keep going up the longer you're exposed and will happen if your filter is empty as well. Missing clothing items or ruined clothing will result in the same thing. Cuts that keep getting worse and multiplying. These cuts can be cured by normal bandages or sheets, but will continue to happen every 10 to 15 seconds if you're still in the gas. So make sure you're out of the gas before you start start to heal. In addition to this, if you're exposed to the gas for around 20 seconds or so, you'll also develop toxic poisoning where you'll begin to cough up blood. This blood will stay in your hands and as you probably know, if you eat with bloody hands, you'll end up with salmonella. Furthermore, you'll start vomiting blood every 4 minutes or so until you eventually run out and die. At this stage, the poisoning can still usually be managed, however, it requires a special treatment called pox antidote and is used in the same way as an EpiPen or morphine. Alternatively, you could always do a blood transfusion with a blood bag and an IV starter kit. As always, you'll have to make sure the blood type is the same as yours and not contaminated. Though the preferred method here is definitely the pox antidote because it just requires less preparation and it's a lot quicker. But if you stay in the gas too long, you'll start vomiting blood and eventually black out. Once you're blacked out, you'll likely die. I've yet to recover from this. Blacking out, in my experience, is deadly. So these toxic zones aren't places you want to play around in. There are some people who say you get a warning before these strikes happen, and that is true. However, they're so inconsistent, it's hard to give blanket advice. But basically, sometimes before the missile explodes above you, you can hear the distant sound of artillery launching the missile towards you, depending on where you are on the map. It can sound like this. Around 40 seconds later, the streets are hit with gas. Within a few seconds, 
the entire area fills with this toxic gas and it's extremely hard to predict where the next one will be seriously this shot here took me a full 27 hours of recording one space just to get not even that good of a shot it's good to note though that there can be a warning in the form of a red flare that appears a little while before the strike happens however as you can see here in the daytime it's very difficult to make out if you do see one chances are the area is about to be hit in the next minute or so so leave the area or get to high ground if you don't have equipment two or three stories up for temporary zones is usually safe enough to avoid the gas though the gas seems to be higher in the permanent zones so don't climb two stories and assume you're safe also keep in mind you can be walking somewhere with zero warning and just be hit with a gas strike luckily you can use the i survive app to tell you exactly where the gas attacks happen so at least you're wise to the possibility one could happen in your area link in the description once the area is hit all the regular zombies die and are replaced by mbc suits making it possible to draw them towards you for some mbc gear and filters but be aware that these zombies are more difficult to kill but still susceptible to a bullet through their face these temporary zones can last around half an hour but in my opinion are best ignoring rather than exploring. So far there doesn't seem to be any benefit to exploring them as the loot remains the same whereas in the permanent zones the loot is way better and sometimes gives you a real reward for your effort. The permanent zones have level 2 and 3 tier stuff including some really cool weapons like the M41A, the M16, the SSD and a bunch of other attachments and so on and so forth. I did look at the possibility of utilising the toxic zones for added base security but they're too inconsistent to really be of any specific use. So if you build an elevated base, it could help prevent raids or interrupt raids, but it's down to luck as to whether or not you benefit from a random attack on the town during the time you need it. So where do you find the gear needed to enter these zones? In short, fire stations and hospitals can give you some really good gear. Hospitals also have a chance of spawning the antidote as well as some MBC gear. Medical tents are great and so are the permanent zones, including zombies in the permanent zones. So don't overlook them once you beat them down. My recommendation on the best toxic zone to explore out of the permanent ones, out of Riffy Shipwreck and Pavlo Military Base, I'd go with the Military Base. I just find that there is more stuff there, more easily obtainable because there's less verticality and it doesn't hurt that there's a military hospital as well. But your results may completely differ, so like I say, it's just my recommendation. It doesn't mean I'm right. I just find it's a lot easier and quicker to go into buildings rather than go up and down a shipwreck using stairs. And so because the filter puts you on a timer, it's better to be as quick as possible. But honestly, there is still so much about these zones we just don't know. But well, hopefully this gives you a good enough understanding on how to survive and manoeuvre around them until we figure it all out. But well, that's the end of the video. Please leave a like and a subscribe. It really does help me a lot. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer. If you want to correct something or add to something I've said, it's just me doing these videos. So it's definitely possible I've missed something and I'll always be glad somebody has let me know. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time.